let's go backwards in time to where I said live alive is what I'm looking forward to probably most from this direct. Cool. Next. Something other than, oh, actually, no, it's not. What were you going to say? <laughs> something other than a remake? Yeah. It is something other than a remake. No, it's, a it's new, not. Yeah, it is. It's a new IP in a franchise. Okay. Sorry, it's not a new yeah. IP. It's a new entry in an old IP. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we, sorry, I was, Nintendo <laughs> Switch Sports. <laughs> It's Wii Sports, all right? That's what everyone knows it as. That's what I meant there was maybe a, it kind of is like a there, remake. There was a Wii U Sports, you know? So let's just... Nah, uh, uh, you can't say uh, the new Mario Strikers is just a remake because it's no, a new one. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. So yeah. there is a new Wii Sports because that's just what everyone played. Nintendo Switch Sports. We will be picking this one up because... It's Wii Sports, man. I, I played Wii Sports to death back in the day. Like, it was Nostalgic. a pack-in with the Wii, uh, which is another point I'm going to make. But first of all, I'm going to ask Dan what his – do you have any nostalgia, shall we say, for Wii Sports? I'm getting sick of these remakes. I think <laughs> – no, I'm It's a new entry, this one. <laughs> My God. Now, look, I, I, I enjoyed the Wii Sports series. Yeah. I thought they, they were pretty cool. Yeah. I thought the uh, way they did it was a bit funny in the direct. Yeah, where they got uh, Sakurai into, <laughs> no, not Sakurai, um, what's his uh, name, into play it in uh, his soccer jersey. And it was adorable. Whatever it was in. Yeah, I thought I thought that adorable scene, that adorable scene was a bit weird. But it, yeah. was, it was adorable. They're like, are you sure you've got your wrist strap on? I loved that. Oh, man. Everybody's sure. seen somebody smash a TV playing Wii Tennis. Mm, smack yeah. their sister over the head. It yeah. happens all the time. I've seen that. Smashed uh, mm-hmm. s- smashed lights. So, no, look, yeah. I'm lights. looking. Yeah, yeah. What serving. Are you playing? Serving. Oh. In, yeah, the overhead shot. Yep. That's, uh, that is a killer. I've I seen saw that it too. was just a, just a shot, like, and let it, go, let, let sailed go. into we, we the TV. And uh, a mate of mine served, hit the light really hard, smashed the light. The light then swung up, right? Because it was like, it's like an old school chandelier yep, like type a chandelier thing. Chandelier type thing. Swung up, put a okay. hole in the ceiling, <laughs> and then <laughs> just got stuck there. So it was just like everybody's looking up, and we're all like, man, your mum's going to be pissed. <laughs> Oh, yeah, dude. Hells, yeah. That yeah, is hilarious. Yep. Smash People, light. It's just, uh, it's just stuck in the ceiling and everybody's looking up going, this is fucked. Oh, dude. Yeah, oh, people's man. mums were, uh, I feel like there was a lot of regret there with the uh, yeah. purchase of the Wii and the Wii Sports. I'm sure there was. Wii Sports is also one of the highest selling games of all time. I'm not surprised because people's parents yeah. loved it. Everybody um, except me family, had man. a Wii and Wii Sports. Yeah, Laura's actually not a Wii Sports fan. Uh, they they are out there. They are out there. Look, I'm one of them. We usually live under rocks. Sometimes you can find us in the forest. Why <laughs> are you not a fan? Yeah, why don't you like it? I don't know. It just it's. Uh, I mean, it's just not that interesting to me. Why? Why? Right. You give us more details. Tell us. What's your problem? Well, okay. Why? I ha- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I have. Maybe it's because I don't have as much nostalgia because I didn't have a Wii and Can I didn't I just have Wii Sports. something out here? This yeah. is the first time we've had like a contention on the show where me and Tom are actually on the same. It is, side yeah. Here. We're all looking at you going. Who the hell is going to be the voice of reason for me? Oh, oh, it's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, it's not. It's all going to go downhill. I'm going to, I'm going to message you guys yeah. in the morning just to make sure that you're still alive as Tom does yeah. like to do death threats. Laura's sleeping on the couch tonight for a change. <laughs> it's not going to be me for once. Wow. I know. It's going to be nice. Change. I have a bed to myself. Oh, nice. Spread out. No, go go on. on. I, I, didn't, day after all. I didn't mean to take over there. <laughs> So go, go, Laura. Tell me what, yeah. what, what, what do you hate about family fun? Like what? <laughs> why do you hate that? Maybe it's just jealousy because I didn't have any 
fun with my parents playing bowling. We just went, I don't know, bowling, like in real life. Why would you do that? <laughs> Imagine that. Totally. No, but maybe it's because I don't have as much nostalgia, but I did have a lot of friends, like all my friends had Wii's and we always went there and played Wii Sports. Mm. I, yeah, look, it doesn't, it doesn't grasp me. It doesn't grab me by the balls, you know? Why though? Why? I want to know it's why. It's just like, because I guess maybe the root of it is that I don't like sports. That's so I, I don't it. like pretending to play sports either. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But I like Mario Golf because there's more to it. You go do the running. It's a bit more fun, but like literally just I don't like any sort of tennis game because you know what it probably is because I suck. <laughs> I suck at real sports and I suck at virtual sports. Yeah. Maybe that's the root of it. I, but it's not just that I suck. It just, it just, well, I do suck, but I just don't find it that interesting. So Tom was like yesterday after we finished work, we we're looking at all of our new pre-orders after the, after it happened. And he's like, cool. So we're going to get, we, we got, we're going to get Nintendo switch sports. Right. And I was like, eh. like I, I guess so that like we can like have it, but maybe I'll play it for, I will have at least one go of all the games and then you're going to have to invite Jasper over to play the rest. I'm going to, Dan, will you play Nintendo Switch Sports with me? Yeah. Can you Hell, play yeah. it? What, what I didn't see is, can you play it online? Yes. Yes, you can. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Another yeah. half assed yeah. game. <laughs> Excellent. That <laughs> is also that where you're up. Point of confusion from before is comes yes. in because so with the physical there is soccer in this one yeah with the, yeah there is soccer in this one uh, which I thought was an interesting choice like like you know there's a million different sports games out there and they're bringing out a Mario soccer game they're also bringing out soccer on so anyways that's it whatever I don't know uh, but with the physical version of the game you get the leg strap similar to the Ring Fit leg strap if anyone has that and you can kick the ball with the strap Woo! i i think that's cool man (laughs) i mean i'm i'm all for that yeah (laughs) i think it's awesome i get where laura's coming from she's like yeah great good job like you kick a ball okay okay it's a bit lame but it's cool like pew 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 or something you know something that i can't go out and do in real life Yes, this is me who guilty. loves farming. Is legal to own a firearm in Australia. Yep, just you, you you could. Yeah, but laser guns though. Yeah, Hang gliders, you've got to pay money for that. Uh, what else exists in games? I know eating cars, like Kirby does. That's not a thing. Just Overcooked. Uh, that's like the, the definition of <laughs> like just, not just, making my point. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, look, no, uh, I think it's a cool introduction. I will be interested to see if it translates well to the Switch, considering the different controller styles available compared yes, to the Wii. Uh, like with the uh, Switch Lite, is that what you mean? Well, mm. can the Switch Lite even do it? Probably. Yes, that is the... Uh, there, are they going to have button mapping for the Switch Lite? It so would not be it, would it? It wouldn't be as fun. The though. only fun thing about Wii Sports back in the day was the fact that you could swing your bits around. I thought you we said that wasn't fun. It's the only saving grace. If you can't do that, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, Just I, pressing a button. I personally have never been a fan of the Switch Lite. I feel like it's a half assed console. Yeah, I agree with that. I understand. I, I understand. get it because it's yeah, like cheaper. It, but I don't, I don't like it personally. It's not for me. It's like the 3DS version of yeah, which the is, Switch. Which is fine. But it's again, this is something that we have brought up previously, and I think Tom's spoken about it more, is are we going to be limited by the Switch Lite with future console, mm-hmm. with future game releases because it can't yep. do X, Y, and Z? Same with well, Xbox. this is a good. This is a good um, 
telltale sign, isn't it? This switch sports, it, are they just going to neglect it? Well, it's absolutely limited. You know that when you buy it, though. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, as far as games go, mm. you know, well, like, I, are they I just would be not- happy if they just went, it's not going to work. Unless yeah, you've got two Joy Cons and you use tabletop yep. mode or something like that, which is, that's fine. That should be allowable, right? That makes sense. Yep. I agree. But other than that, no. Yes. Yeah, no, I agree. work really well yep. on the console or the, the device that it is intended for, mm-hmm. and then that's it. Intended- Especially something like Switch Sports, which is heavily motion. Yeah. Uh, my only other point I wanted to bring up with this is I did mention the fact that Wii Sports is one of the highest selling games of all time. Is that because it was a package in with the Wii? Yeah, yeah I see Dan nodding. Like Mario Kart 9. Yeah. Not that it wouldn't be one of the best selling games on the Switch too, but I think that part of the reason why it's the why it is is because it was it's in a package. Do you know Wait, something what? that we don't know? Mario Kart 9. I mean sorry, eight. Deluxe. Huh? Don't worry. No, no, explain. No, well, didn't you right, say so just so say so that so. um you thought that Wii Sports yeah. was one of the highest selling games because it was part of a package? Yes. Yeah. I'm was just saying that I think that it might be similar with Mario Kart. Eight deluxe. Yeah. Because it's packaging with the Switch. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Sorry. I didn't I didn't get <laughs> yeah, it. No, no, you I didn't say that. You yeah. said Mario Kart nine. I jumped to nine. I was yeah. like, what do you mean? My bad. I thought I thought for a second I thought I was like, oh my God, does she know something that I've just completely missed? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I, I think have. I just made a prediction. Yeah. yeah you're I was, I was like, uh, Mario Kart nine that? already exists, by the way, everyone. But we'll get to that. In in a bit. So cool. yeah, I, I I do think you are correct. Wii Sports was basically just given to everybody, um, mm-hmm. which they needed to do. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it was that. That's what should have happened with like one, two switch and that terrible, terrible game. To sell the to yeah to sell the to sell the Wii and make people understand it, they had to give something with it. So mm-hmm. Wii Sports was a tactical move. Mario Kart Deluxe 8 or whatever they call them now. I'm not so good with the names the the older that I the older that I get. I, f- I forget these things, but Mario Kart 8 Deluxe uh, is you know bundled with the Switch version 2 is as they call it. And not not the OLED, just the Switch version 2 as as DLC content. So that was outselling the OLED as well at the time. So, and Nintendo basically neglected the gray version of the Nintendo Switch and only had it on the neon and, what is it, neon? I think it's called neon. Yeah, the neon. Available with the neon Switch as as DLC content. So I, I think it's a similar, I mean, Mario Kart has been around for, since the Wii U, so you know, slightly, yes. slightly uh, different. But yeah, I, I think Wii Sports was only as popular as it was because it was bundled with everything. Like if you went to an EB Games today, well, maybe not, but a couple of years ago, you, you'd probably pick it up for fifty cents. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It'll be it'll be in bargain bins all around the shop. So I hope this does well for Nintendo. Again, I think they're going to have a lot of people with like nostalgia, like like me and you, Dan, who are just going to do it because, uh, look, it might not be the best game in the world. I do, I'm not expecting it to be amazing, but I think it's going to be a little bit of fun. And if me and you spend three hours on it, it's, it's also a little bit cheaper. It's not a full 80 Australian dollars. It's only going to cost 70 Australian dollars with the strap as well with the little uh, pack in strap. So I think if we play that for three or four hours, that's money well spent. And I I have a feeling we'll go back to it at least a couple more times. So yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a bit of fun. We're going to have a bit of fun with it. I don't know if it's going to be a system seller like they might be expecting it to be, mm. you know? I, yeah, I highly doubt it'll be a system seller. Uh, yep. Look, if it works well, 
which mm. I, I am anticipating that it that it will. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to pick up a copy and and have a bit of fun playing that. And again, I'm looking for family games. Yes, I say with that. My yeah, daughter. Now I know Laura's the daughter will family love. games. She's very mm. against people enjoying games together. From what I've ascertained from this podcast so far, she hates everybody else. That's yeah. really what I got from this. So I can confirm. Yeah. I usually live in, in the forest, so especially me. Yeah. You know what your daughter might love? What? Going bowling. <laughs> yeah, like she, she's four. How real life bowling. Pick up a ball. Oh. Dude, she's she's Pickles. like the size of a ball right now. <laughs> God. No, look, yeah, she I does, did, did she does enjoy it. But to Tom's point here, yeah, it's how much? 70 Aussie dollars? Yeah, it's a, 70 Australian as opposed to 80. So which, if I take yeah. her bowling, yeah, right, we go bowling, so we play two games, only two. Take mm-hmm. like what, 20 bucks, 30 bucks? Say 30, 40 bucks. Then yep. we've got to get hot dogs. Of course. Got to. Got to get hot dogs. Yep. In so that one outing <laughs> is potentially $70, $80, if not more. Whoa, when she's- what hot dogs are you eating? <laughs> My God. Have you had hot, hot dogs at bowling? They had like 40 bucks. bucks each. All, of a sudden, all of a sudden, there's like 20 Forty dollars on hot dogs. I usually buy beers at bowling, so it would yeah. probably equate to hot the dogs, same amount. A couple of drinks, yeah, dips, or the the games that they got there as well, the yeah. arcade style games. A little arcade, yeah, that's the killer at bowling. So bowling is fine as a once every six months. But yeah. Do you expect me to go bowling every week? If I want to go bowling. Yeah, what if she gets addicted to it? She wants to go every week. Yeah. You know what the better option is? Spend $70 on Switch Sports. Yeah. yeah. But I did make this point. I did make this point in our YouTube video. When Wii Sports came out, I didn't have a car. I couldn't, I didn't have my license. I couldn't just go bowling whenever I wanted. I couldn't just go down and kick a ball at the soccer pitch down down the street. You know, I I didn't have a choice and I had to play. Switch sports, uh, Wii Sports. My God, it's so confusing, isn't it? Uh, now I I can do those things. Although there is like a fencing sword game, which I don't think is doable in real life, uh, at least around these parts anyway. Um, yeah, so that's cool. That's cool. It I'm disappointed cool. baseball's not there. Baseball was always my favorite on the Wii Sports. So that's, that's a shame, but uh, whatever. Looking forward to soccer, I think. <laughs> Soccer, okay. volleyball, and badminton. Are yes. The new ones. Oh, yes. Absolutely. That was so funny watching them do volleyball. Oh my God. Yeah. I loved that. Yeah, that was. Uh, I haven't actually watched the direct. Bloody watch it. <laughs> yeah. At least funny. That it is good. a laugh. It is a laugh. I do uh, like the translations don't come across, if that makes sense. Like, you know, oh, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Yeah. It's, I'll, um, I mean, it's always going to happen, different cultures, right? Yeah. So it's always going to happen, but it's grand to uh, watch. Yes, it is. It is funny. I'll I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Um, Quickly, uh, Metroid Dread is getting an update. Uh, This is another uh, must own on the Switch, I believe. Metroid Dread is an absolutely beautiful game. Uh, Laura, do you want to cover this one? Yeah. Well, the made a rookie mode Mm -hmm. for people like myself that find it pretty hard, but I'm not going to use it. It is pretty hard though. I'm almost finished it. So no way in hell I'm going to switch it to rookie mode now, but I do know a lot of people who, um, when I would like post about it on Instagram, I had like several of my friends were like, there's no way I'm even going to try. So that would be cool for people like, um, people like them. And there's also a one hit kill mode, mm-hmm. which I cannot even imagine. I, I wish that they had a death counter on yeah. Metroid Dread, like they do with Ori. Yeah, that would if be you've cool. ever played um the Ori games, Ori in the Blind Forest or the Willow with Will of the Wisps. 
Yep. When you like go into the pause menu, it tells you how many times yeah, you've died. They've got that with like pumpkin jack as well. It's another one. I, I wish that they had that with Metroid De- Metroid Dread. I bet it would be like at least one million. <laughs> one million times. Now maybe one like three hundred times. Dread. Yeah. It would be really good if they just did it right. What's I'm your joking. problem I'm with that? I'm right. joking. Yeah. That was a joke. Uh, on Jeez, Metroid Dread, though, way to freaking set me off, bro. Uh, <laughs> that was actually oh, really good. He triggered me hard. That game plays flawless. Yeah, it is. It's, a, it's fantastic. So there is a demo for Metroid Dread if you don't uh, know if you want to play it uh, yes. or not. And so. this update is coming to the demo as well. Yeah. So you can put the demo on rookie mode or on super ridiculous, I'm a freak and just want to watch the world One burn mode. One hit kill mode. Yeah. That's like people for people who love pain yeah yes but i would love to watch somebody stream that on yes Twitch. i that is exactly what i was thinking it's when they're announcing not it. gonna be me no but i would love to watch somebody else do it i yes. vote you should do it oh my god it's literally gonna be a whole like four hours of laura just swearing and, get, and getting like no literally not off literally the first nowhere. screen when i oh when i reckon i, I could get past the first screen actually one of our friends did a actually Lemon Cold Games did a struggle stream the other day where she just like played a bunch of really hard games that she's not good at. So that, that would be we fun. shall steal her idea and make you play Metroid Dread for 12 hours. How do you <laughs> because there is like so many times in that game where you go into the Emmy zone and the Emmy is literally standing right there, yeah, like you can't go yep. anywhere else, yeah, you don't. and it's always just a random spots in the thing it's not even like to be fair if the emmy catches you it's a one-hit kill anyway yeah but you don't go like all the way back to the start oh no you probably wouldn't go all the way I back don't to the start the back. i don't think they're making it a roguelike no <sighs> imagine that that's what like my mind was like no nah, nah, nah. it's just you don't have a health bar yeah yeah so yeah, yeah well emmy is a one-shot at killing exactly. anyway, then, isn't it? yeah yeah there's also a boss rush mode there is it's yeah, coming out in April. Too. Yep. That's, I I, I'm glad Dread's getting a bit of love. And as you said, it's, it just makes it more accessible to more people. Yeah. The, um, a lot of people on Instagram I know are just like, whoa, it's tough. And now it's not. So that's cool. And you can, again, you can try that in the demo. So if you thought the original demo was way too hard, just go put it on rookie mode and give it another shot. Honestly, like re- really recommend you trying that out because it is an amazing game. Like, it's really cool. I've almost finished it. So if I put it on rookie mode now, I yeah. feel like I just would. You're cheating. Yeah. I would have to play it again. Yes. With yeah. one hit kill mode. Yeah. To, to make up for <laughs> to it. To make up for it. <laughs> well, uh, good on you. I, I, I respect that. Uh, you've struggled through it. You're going to make it happen. Oh, yeah. Good on you, Laurie. You may as well now. Yeah. I, I, I do like do the it. fact that Nintendo seem to be doing that more and more with their hmm. uh, demos it's and good. stuff. Yeah, so, no, it's really good. Yeah, I, I find it hard with the Nintendo to pick, well, used to, find it hard with the Nintendo to pick a game because, you, you know, like I've got an Xbox, I've got, um, I've got the Switch, I use GeForce Now for uh, any computer gaming that I do. So, mm-hmm. you know, I've got all three. I guess you could call it other than the PlayStation, which, you know, nobody cares about. So I only, I only say that because Tom's in the room. I, I, I like the demo oh, aspect. You me up, guys. I, I just, I like the demo aspect. I, I think it's a, I, I think it's a throwback. Yeah. It is hundred percent. We actually talked about this in our YouTube video again, where uh Remember the uh, Kellogg's cornflakes packets oh, yeah. where the demos come in? Age of Empires yeah, 2 was... came in that as well. That's exactly what Laura said. She's like, Age of Empires? Yes, that was. They were the days. That's what I used to like eating cereal when it had a video game in it. Now, cereal's the worst. Who would honestly, if you're a grown adult and you eat cereal for breakfast, you need to take a long, hard look at your life. You know that there's other options like bacon and you can have bacon and eggs for breakfast. Every day is cinnamon adult. toast crunch beats bacon and eggs any day. And look, I we live it. in Australia, all right? Our options are limited. There's only like fruit loops are good. 
rice bubbles, cornflakes. I hate rice. Nah, rice Fruit bubbles. Fruit loops are overrated. Cornflakes are good, but I usually just eat I'm my cornflakes raw. No. Yeah, right, right, exactly. right. That's why it's good. No, it's just so hard. <laughs> Cinnamon Toast Crunch and Fruit Loops are like snacks, like dessert items, you know? Yeah, there you go. The best, the best time to eat cereal of those c- calibers is late at night. Guys, the best part about eating, about being an adult is being able to eat dessert any time you want. For breakfast. For breakfast. You, you wait a dinner. couple of years. You wait a, you wait a couple of years, maybe five. You can't do that either. So it's not <laughs> it's not great. Do you know? Why not? Who says? Do you know if I have yeah, I if I have a can of solo, right? Just <laughs> half half a can, my mouth yeah. will be filled by the morning with four or five ulcers. Oh. oh, that sucks. Yeah. Your body starts to break down, literally break I down cannot, on you. Yeah. I cannot have sugar in large quantities. So it's, oh. it's, 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 I'm sorry. It, it might be the best uh, post-teen, pre-30s, but it, it's, all, <laughs> it's all downhill eventually. Well, I've got two years of cinnamon toast crunch left, so I better start crunching. Start yeah. that out. You're in that sweet spot. Well, you're not a kid, but you're not old. I, I'm starting. I'm starting to think that I'm kind of getting old. Hangovers are getting worse. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Um, I guess this is this either might trigger Dan or it might make him a bit happier. It's not a remake. It's not a remaster. Nintendo is just adding the Earthbound series to the Nintendo Switch Online, the old NES and the SNES service. Uh, is that triggering you, Dan, or would you rather them just do that with all their old games? Just just put them on the online service and leave them there. Uh, I think I think anything they bring to those older uh, systems is fantastic. And the reason yeah. I say that is because okay. they heavily, heavily protect their old IP to the point that mm-hmm. they're going to take a little old dude from Sweden or wherever the hell he was from to court over the fact that he had a website where it had Nintendo 64 ROMs. Now, yes. I have no issue with a company protecting their IP as long nope. as they make that IP available. Yeah, yeah. No other yes. time. Other than mm-hmm. that, you can go yeah. screw yourself. Yep, so, no, I understand. What's that? No, yeah, yeah. I'm the, with you. That's fine. I think, I mean, the Nintendo 64, the way it looks, I don't think they did that very well. I think the Super yep. Nintendo and the NES are really good, though. I I still enjoy jump, jumping on and playing Donkey Kong. So, yep. you know, I mean, Donkey no, Kong I Country agree. for me is nostalgia, but I really think they need to bring... You, you literally wiped out a whole library because somebody was giving it away for free and yet yeah. you're going to bring one game every two months to the library. That's my only issue with the 64 and the, you know, NES and the SNES stuff is that they, yeah, they're just not bringing it enough. I think they need to bring at least five a month. Mm, fill, out I, the, fill it out. That's, that was my... I was a bit shocked when the Mother Games were announced coming to the NES and the SNES because I thought that was dead. It's been like over six months since we got a new game added to the NES and the SNES. And even then it was, I can't even remember the name of them. They were just like pretty not the greatest mm-hmm. of games. So uh, they look, to be fair though, the NES and the SNES online service, they have like 99% of what you would want to play anyways. Uh, they have all the, the Zelda cool. games, the Mario's, the Donkey Kong games. Like, they're all there. So, there is, don't get me wrong, there's some. There's some. I feel like there's one you want to tell me about, Dan. I, I really want Dragon Ball Z. See, there you go. There's, there is some. But as far as, like, the first party Nintendos, like, you do have most of them. And Mother being on there. Do they, do they have stuff? This is sort of confusing because... Uh, yeah, Star Fox is on there. Yep, no, the absolutely. They're all, yeah, 
Yeah. The second one that was never released. Wait, on the are you talking about six? No, because Star Fox was a sixty-four title. No. So Star Fox Two was never yeah. released originally on the Super Nintendo. And then okay. what they did was when they brought out the Super Nintendo Classic, they released yeah. Star Fox Two for the first time. Oh, okay. Nah, yeah. But nah. I don't. I mean, Star Fox is okay, but it's not. Laura hates it. It's not totally my thing. I get it, but you know, Mario, Donkey Kong were better. That's that's all. I but just no, I don't. Was, think that's it was interesting that they never released the game, and then all of a sudden they released it on the Super Nintendo Classic without telling the, the original just, developer, by the way. Oh, okay. There they you go. Did. It must have just been there in their archives and they scrapped it in favour of Star Fox 64. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. It was finished. It was a finished game. Yeah, yeah it must have, I, yeah that's so, the only thing I can think of. It, it yeah. came out too late in the life cycle and it was all over by then. Anyways, Earthbound slash Mother depending on where you're from and how you know it, is coming over. Uh, these games are really hard to get as well. Uh, they are quite pricey. So having them more accessible is great. Uh, yeah, even if you do have an original SNES, NES or a, a Hyperkin console, whatever you have to play these games, yeah, they, they are quite hard to get your hands on. So I'm really happy they're coming over. Uh, Earthbound is Mother. For those people that don't know, Earthbound Beginnings is just Mother 1, then Earthbound is Mother 2, and Mother 3 was never released outside of Japan again. So going back to what Laura said with the Chrono games, is that bringing, bringing Chrono over, does that mean they're making a new one? Are these two, the first two Earthbounds coming over because they're going to release a Mother 3 translation finally, release it in the West? We have Lucas and Ness in Smash. I hope so. It would make I sense. Say. I really hope so because it looks like a really fun game and I want to play it. And I, I can't read Japanese, unfortunately. It's an RPG. You, you need to know what the hell is going on. Next. Oh, okay. We've got... We're coming to the end of this. I know it's been a long one. Bear with us, my friends. We have two very juicy pieces of information. I mentioned before that Mario Kart 9 already exists and you two looked at me funny. Yeah, because it It doesn't. Mario, Nintendo confirmed that they're free. They confirmed, in quotation marks, that Mario Kart Live, their mobile game is canon, is officially part of the Mario Kart line of games it's part of that universe shall we say when they put a montage of all of the mario kart games up on the screen during this direct and mario kart live was there at the end it came out after eight it is the ninth installment in the mario kart franchise i yeah sorry to disappoint you it's not as good as it (laughs) everyone was hoping no yeah and disappointing so this leads us into what the actual announcement was. They're releasing DLC for Mario Kart. Dan, you tried to bring this up earlier. I saw you trying to restrain yourself because you and you and your little one are a bit over Mario Kart, as you said. You played all the tracks. Uh, Laura gets very over Mario Kart very quickly. She's always like, you know, you play all the tracks and you're like, yeah. You know? uh, yeah, I do all the races. Like I play each of the tracks and that's kind of my Mario Kart for one sitting. Yeah. I don't want to like, I don't feel that like interested, like doing the same races over and over again. So like whenever I'm having a session of Mario Kart, I play all the races once and then I'm like, sweet. So what she actually does is plays half of the races and then decides she hates family fun again and quits. No, I play all of the races once. Yeah, what do you mean half the we races? We played half of the last time you got sick of it. <sighs> Well, it doesn't matter because you're sleeping on the couch tonight anyway. So Can't wait. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, Laurie. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, Dan. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> I think the new stuff is really good and I agree, I agree. that it gets repetitive and especially for younger 
generation. It really wears thin. I don't think there's enough in the in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe as as it is personally. I, I think it needs more. So I'm glad that more is coming. And it's a fairly substantial amount, really. Oh yeah, it's huge. So, it's, uh... but it had me thinking mm -hmm. about what the future of gaming looks like. Yes, this is this is an interesting conversation. Go. go There's first. a couple of points here. This is the first one. You go first. Oh, no. Well, so the the most obvious thing about this is that Mario Kart 8 released in 2014 on the Wii U. This, these updates, these DLC is going to last us until the end of 2023, they've confirmed. So Mario Kart 8 is going to have a 10-year life cycle. That is huge. That is, it is, it's quite impressive. Like, good, good on them. Like, props to them. I would never, ever have thought, you know, we'll get a new one every, like, three or four years. And, like, the Switch doesn't have its own Mario Kart. I would never have guessed that. So, good on them. It's kind of turning... I don't want to say, like... I don't want to say... It's similar to something like you know, Warzone or Fortnite where there's like seasons and like like this games as a service, I guess. I guess it's kind of like that, like a service because you are like you are buying a physical copy and it's got a lot on it. Don't get me wrong. It's got heaps of tracks. Uh, I agree with Dan. There's a bit of lacking content. I would have liked to have been able to unlock some tracks or something like that, be a bit more single player orientated. That would be nice have some more goals, if you will, in the game. Uh, so it's not, it's not like, it's not a free game. It's not a game's as a service, but it, it kind of is going there in a way. And they already did something similar with Smash Brothers where there was, you know, monthly tournaments. There was, you know, all these characters you could download. You could spend quite a lot of money getting all the challenger packs, all, all two of them, you know, whatever it was. And yeah, is that what you were going to say? Is that what where you, your train of thought was going? How they, they seem to be going more down that we'll keep, we'll make this game and then we'll just add to it slowly, bring more content, keep people interested. What I'm thinking is, is coming is, yeah, that is, is along those lines is, instead of releasing Destiny 1, Destiny 2, mm -hmm. let's... Well, that's what Destiny tried to do that. Yes. Just quickly, they tried to do a 10-year cycle with Destiny. And I think they're succeeding with Destiny 2. Yeah. With what they're, with what they're doing. You know, they, they're bringing out DLC, which significantly increases the law. Now, mm -hmm. this is what I see happening as a long-term thing to certain IP. So what I think is going to happen is uh, there will be another release of Mario Kart, is my thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it will stay as the last release and just have DLC content coming out. And I think that is going to happen with most games now. Yep. Next generation. A release, and yep. that's going to be the game. So, Destiny 2 is an example. They're bringing out the Witch Queen uh, DLC, 22nd of Feb. I think that comes out. And I just see this being a continuous loop. I think the only exception with these rules is going to be your first, uh, sorry, single player game. Yeah. So, RPGs, uh, JRPGs, action adventure titles, that type of stuff. Uh, I can't imagine, uh, you know, The Last of Us, just, you know, them constantly adding more missions and such mm. onto that. I can't imagine 
uh, as like Ratchet and Clank or something like that. You know what I mean? I can't imagine them doing it for those type of games. But yeah, anything with a multiplayer aspect, I agree with you. Can you imagine? Now, let's think back to Sword and Shield Mm -hmm. with the uh, DLC. Sword and Shield, I I actually like the game quite a lot with the DLC. I think the DLC is required uh, for Pokemon Sword and Shield. Without it, it's, it's lacking a little bit. Think about that premise, though, with those two islands, whatever the hell you want to call it, in Breath of the Wild. Think yeah. about Link visiting. I, I get where you're going, but I don't think they would be able to do that continuously. Like, I don't, by the sixth island, I feel like all of you Breath of the Wild fans who, you know, single player RPGs yeah. are going to be like, come on, just give us another one. Are Stop they going it. to do that to extend their titles life. moving forward? Yeah, the life of their title. Like, like you just said, oh, Mario I, Kart is what? That's that's 10 year release yeah are are they going to start like can you like for me i can see zelda like because majora's mask was basically an extension of ocarina of time if you want to look at the timelines and the way it sort of worked yeah it was built in the same engine very quickly yeah can can you imagine ocarina of time getting to a point i mean the breath of the wild getting to a point where it's like okay there's a whole new area that needs your help die rule needs help so you've got a die rule in your verse dumbledore Damn it. oh better that would be awesome way yeah. better you to- or you go to low rule and verse Voldemort. Yeah. yes there is but, yeah I, I i'm just thinking out aloud now are they going to do this sort of thing because fortnite i mean yeah, it's 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 huge, hundred yeah. percent. Totally, I know people that doing this people drop so much money on that. People drop so much money on that. I'm sorry, but there's so many good indie games that you can get for like less than a skin costs in Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Like just support, and being here in Australia, there's so many Australian games you can get for less than it costs for a skin on Fortnite. Like. Please, just even if you're going to play it for an hour, spend seven dollars on on that locally homegrown game. Support local developers. Yeah, sorry, that's a, that was that that's a tangent, but it's continue. That's a tangent. I think that we've been on before. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm all for supporting small indie indie devs. I think it's yeah. important in the industry because they're the ones who are going to keep this is like classic style of games alive. Like Dan said, if all these like huge big budget titles are going to go that way as uh, with microtransactions being free to play and all that stuff. Uh, like that, like the Disney racer, like, you know, Disney is, is freaking huge and they're bringing out a new racing game and, you know, it's free to play. Like they, they just want people in the door and they want to keep people interested. I think that some games are going to start doing that, but I think that it won't be all games. Cause I think some games are just better without that sort of formula but some games would benefit from it yep uh, sometimes dlc annoys me because i'll finish a game and uh, being content creators we have to play a lot of games uh, especially for our youtube channel like there is like there's so many games to play and then a dlc will release later and i'm like oh like i've had my time with that game you know, if, if it was there from the start, I would have definitely finished it because, you know, I'm, I'm on a roll. Like, I have to finish it. But I don't, I don't, does anyone else get, get that mm-hmm. feeling sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes yeah. the DLC comes out like, look, we don't have the DLC for Sword and Shield. It came out so long after and the, the ship had sailed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is so weird for us because we're like obsessed with Pokemon. We like have Pokemon everything except Sword and Shield DLC. Yeah, so yeah. for me, Actually, the DLC it comes out too late. Is what made that game good. Yeah, but yeah. If fair you, enough. If you have a look at say uh, Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse Two as an yep. example. Do you know how many DLC packs have been released? And now, when I say DLC pack, I'll, I'll be a little yeah, bit, I do. I'll be a little bit clearer. Yeah. But adds characters and yep. 
content. Do you know how yep. many there are? So there's so for those of you that don't know, if you go into the switch and you go into the eShop, there is like about 10 different tiers you can get for this game, ranging from like $60 for the like just the game, and you can pay up to like $250 for the game and all like 100 of its DLCs. Like it's insane. Or you can pay $10 for them individually. So there's there is in total of of playable character DLCs and uh, additional content. It, this doesn't include all the other DLCs that are still applicable to the game, which, you know, you can buy a log for $1.50 or something. There's 13 DLCs for a game. And I'm going to look up when it was released. Because- yeah, they're just trying to keep people interested. That's, that. I feel like that's, as much as companies want to make money, they want people to be interested in their IPs above all else. Because if they're not interested in IP, then they're not going to make money off it. Well, if yeah, because it's cheaper, it would be cheaper to release DLC on the same game mm-hmm. rather than produce and release an, an entire new game. And if people are still buying Mario Kart 8 Deluxe like it's hotcakes, why would they creep spend the money in making and creating the physical copies and everything selling a whole new game when they can just release DLC for 48 new races over the next two, until the end of 2023, yeah. which is a good, decent while. Yeah, yeah. It's a Why would time. they if they don't have to? Mm-hmm. Well, and we're all going to get it. Released in 2016. There you go. Yeah. So it's it's still a while away from being 10 years, but I've if another 13 DLCs and it'll make it. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I I agree with you, Dan. I don't know how I feel about it yet, though. Uh, yeah, it's um, there's again both good and bad points, isn't there? Yeah, I no. mean, I think I, I don't know because like if if they made a new Mario Kart, well, ten, I suppose, mm-hmm. is it got? Would it be like Mario Kart Eight Deluxe, where we were like, oh, I wish there was more. Mm. But now that we've got 48 new races, like we've got that more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it creating a better game than making a new one from scratch would? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like they originally intended, they didn't necessarily build these courses with a new game in mind, but I feel like they at least had, because you know some old Mario Kart tracks come back in every Mario Kart game. Yeah. And I feel like they did that they're like okay we're gonna bring in this old course this old course for the new mario kart that's releasing and then mario kart 8 deluxe just kept selling and they were like wow why would we do that let's just add them to eight Mm. why not yeah and yeah it's it's interesting Mm. the other point that we have with this is that they are adding this dlc for free if you own the expansion pass to nintendo switch online so i'm stoked that is how you add value to a service by giving you 48 new tracks for your biggest game, essentially doubling the game. Again, it's over the next, it's drip fed over the next two years. I think it's like six, six yeah, they courses come in at a time. Of five or yeah, six something, or something like that. Uh, but yeah, that's how you add value to it. Um, you, you literally, your two biggest selling games. I know not Animal Crossing isn't for everyone. Uh, but it is the second highest selling game on the Switch after Mario Kart. So there's no denying it's it's huge and it's had a large cultural impact, especially during uh, the pandemic. So that for us in its own, like hell's yeah, we're going to get the expansion pass for the online service just for that DLC. And the fact that we can go and play Mario Kart 64 or you know Ocarina of Time or whatever if we want to as well or some Sega games but I haven't but I could uh, <laughs> yeah that that's just that was the bonus for it definitely us. sweetens the deal for the Nintendo Switch online service because they're not cheap DLCs like I think it's like is it $25 per pack yeah of that, these races I think it's $25 for all 48 for, okay, twenty five dollars for or still yeah. even so. Um, Animal Crossing was thirty or thirty five dollars. 
yeah. and this is US dollars. So yeah. that's a decent amount of money. Yeah. How much is it for the online service for year, for a year? Is that a hundred? I think it's fifty bucks 64. extra, sixty four dollars for a family. No, because it was seventy. Oh. It was seventy five dollars or something for a family pack I'm of the online service. But I don't know if that was just the old one. Um, even so, over a year. I think it was like 80 or $100 or something. But they're going to be adding more DLC to it. It's not just going to be these two games. No, I, don't, I don't think. That is my next question, uh, which is quite interesting. $60. Okay, yeah. It's 60, 60 Australian dollars. That's, the pro- that's essentially the price of $25 for the Mario Kart DLC yeah. plus $35 for the Animal Crossing DLC. That's yeah. done. You've, or you've paid for it. The way I look at it is that the online service is 30. The expansion pass is 60. So you're paying another 30. The Animal Crossing DLC. And this is for individual memberships, by the way. So for Laura and I. Oh, that's why I thought it was 100. For Laura and I, we would have to buy the DLC for Animal Crossing separately. And it would be so thirty five dollars each, which is seventy dollars. So for the family membership, which we get for the online service, as an extra fifty bucks, it's 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 just a no brainer. Like it was instantly worth it for the family option, and you are able to have up to eight accounts on that family option. So Dan, it might actually be worth you cancelling yours and just signing up to ours, uh, and then because we pay for a family account anyway. Uh, that's something we'll talk to you about off off stream, uh, but you you probably should do that. It makes a hell of a lot more sense, I think. Um, and yeah, so it was instantly worth it for us being the family family option. Sorry, going back to what Laura was going to say, are they going to release more DLCs? Yes, that's ex- that's immediately what I thought when they announced the Animal Crossing DLC. I was like, this is what they're going to do now. There's that expectation at least, isn't there? Mm-hmm. So. If they don't, people are going to be upset. They Well, was there an expectation? Because they never said that. There is now. There is yeah, now. now there is. That's the, yep. that's the thing. If you, if you set those expectations, which they have, Animal Crossing and now Mario Kart, because yep. they're trying now to push like people it. to this subscription service. So yep. next, what is going to come is another price rise. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think the initial price rise was as bad as people were saying it was. Like, yeah. seriously, it was... Especially with that Animal Crossing DLC. It was mm. $29.95 and jumped up to $59. Yep. Like, okay, so, uh, yeah, some people A don't double. play Animal Crossing. I don't. I'm, mm. It's... I just don't care. Um, no, it's not for everyone. To be honest, I Neither think I'd Martin enjoy it if I played it. So. I just... Too much going on. But to add the 64, to add Sega, I guess. Yeah. And then Mario Kart DLC and all those other bits of pieces. Now there's the expectation set. But what is also going to happen is I guarantee you in the next two years, at least, we are going to see a price rise. And I would say that price rise will be somewhere in the line of 50 bucks. Yeah. Well, maybe. I suppose if they have like 10 DLCs on there, then eventually Which, it will become worth yeah. it to the uh, point again, where it will be worth money. more. Yes. People, people yes. literally tore into Nintendo about going from $29 to $59. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's 12 months. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. It's, it's really not much. When Like $30 a year, it's like... Again, if you want to buy Ocarina of Time on a cartridge for your old 64, like, <laughs> it's a Good lot luck. more than $30 a year. Exactly. You could pay this online subscription service for like 10 years and it would still be less than buying a good copy of Ocarina of Time for your 64 in most cases. Well, so, I have yeah. Those already. Good for you. Hold on to it. It'll be worth millions one day. <laughs> So, but, but yeah, yeah I, I agree. it's all about value, man. All mm-hmm. about value for money. I think that their online service is, I thought it was worth it already. I definitely think it's worth it now. And I'm really excited for these 48 new races. Yeah. I mean, it bought, for us, the online service was worth it on day one when we streamed for four hours on 
Twitch playing Mario Kart. We played a bit of Ocarina. And like those four hours for $30 for two people is cheap entertainment, people. Like, come on. Like Laura and I go to the movies. It's the cheapest movie theater around here is $16 a ticket on like a Tuesday night or something. Like it's the cheap night, you know? So that's already $32. And there's not many movies that go for four hours. And also you don't get to meet Dan in these mm. movies because that just happened to be the stream that we, we met each other on. So to me, that's it's worth it already. Day one, done, great. But I understand people not seeing that. I just, you know, that's my argument. Every DLC that. people are going to be more and more inclined to mm-hmm. jump on board, I think. Yep, they're pushing yeah. it, aren't they? Yeah. I, I, just, uh, I just think for the cost... I, yeah, I don't think there's... Look, it, the service definitely needs to be more robust. Like, why isn't yes. every game a cloud-safe game? Like, that's bullshit. Yeah, so, that's, that is whack. Like, it needs to be made more robust from that point of view because you can't have that as a selling point, which they do, right? Cloud saves and playing with your friends. But hold on, I can't talk to any of my friends. I need to use Discord. Yes, that that is the biggest problem in my mind is yeah the lack of voice chat i think our first podcast was actually about yes. all of this stuff so it was yeah the online features yeah, yeah. It was. first podcast we sound very professional yep. it's uh extremely rough and yet it, it, it was interesting mm. good time but, so. yeah it's basically yeah basically around around these lines if you want to hear our full opinions on it yeah but once we get to the Nintendo portion of that podcast, refer back to this one because it's now definitely more worth it, mm-hmm. especially with the expectation they're going to be bringing more DLCs. Yeah. Imagine Breath of the Wild's 2 DLC gets That's what I'm in. thinking. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. Splatoon 3 DLC. I think I think they're all going to... I don't think they're going to put all DLC on it, though, because, yeah, as Dan said, then it's going to be not worth it for them anymore. I think this... Okay, so here's a little bit of our theory tinfoil hattiness. When it's finally time for Breath of the Wild 2 DLC, that's when they hike the price. That's when they release the Game Boy Advance line of games onto the online that's when they put the Breath of the Wild 2 DLC in that next tier and then they then charge you more again mm. for it. That's that's just, I, I pulled that out of nowhere. That's, that's what I think. That's basically happen. exactly where my thinking was. Yeah. It, it, but it has to be something big yeah. like Breath of the Wild 2, you know, or if they're going to release another Mario Odyssey and do DLCs to that. Yes. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, very interesting the way it's going to go. Mm-hmm, it is. Mm. What was next on the list? I think we're the, at like two and a half hours now. The so last we're going thing. Premium movie links today. Oh, we are. Yeah, here's some cheap entertainment. It costs you nothing to listen <laughs> to this podcast. <laughs> Thanks for getting this far, everybody, if you're still this far. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to listen to a bunch of, let's be honest, like no name, nobody's really in the industry to, uh, hear us ramble on about our thoughts and opinions for this long. We um, really appreciate it. We know there's many a podcast out there. Me and Laura are very good. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Dance Big Man big over here. <laughs> now, look, we know that there is many a, a podcast of similar style. I myself listen to a couple. And, yeah, we, we definitely appreciate you listening for this long. We do have one more thing. There was one more announcement uh coming and i wanted to bring this up when me and dan were arguing before but i did want to keep it for now uh it is another big title i mentioned at the start of the podcast that there's a lot of sequels coming out this year splatoon uh fire emblem warriors and xenoblade chronicles 3 dan is probably not excited because he's been a grumpy old fart today (laughs) Uh, <laughs> it's not a remake or a remaster, so I think he'll like it. Well, he bloody better not have a problem with it. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, it's okay if you do. I understand. I actually understand this one. The second Xenoblade Chronicles, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, was released in the first year of the Switch, and it, it was divisive. Uh, a lot of people in the community 
in the Xenoblade community, the, the, the fan base, agrees that it's the worst one. It is the worst Xenoblade, apparently. Uh, they released some DLC, Torna the Golden Country, which was essentially a whole new game. Like it was game length DLC, which is meant to be a lot better. Haven't played it. Uh, and then recently, a year or so ago now, they released Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, which was, of course, originally a Wii title. They brought that over to the Switch. That game is really good. What is this? What is this one going to be? Yeah, what way is it going to sway? What way will it sway? Yeah, it's going to be good. I have a feeling that this game is actually going to be good. It looks good, I think. I hope so. Well, they recovered with the DLC, didn't they? Which means they listened. Yes. No, Mono- so Monolith Soft Studios, which is the, the studios behind this game, are actually, they're very consumer friendly and they do listen and take a lot of feedback and and that has been proven with a lot of a lot of the things they've released. So, yeah, good on them. Sorry, I just had to add that. Continue, yeah, well, Dan. I mean, they did. They listened. That's mm-hmm. plain and simple. And if a company uh, listens and does try to improve, you know what they've done and where they where they've gone with the direction of a game, then cool, easy. I, I yeah. think I think this will be a good. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm expecting. Not big things, but I'm, I'm expecting good things from this. Uh, a game I will pick up. Yeah, yeah so are we. I yeah, have pre-ordered I, it already. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. Different to, say, uh, Cyberpunk, where yes. Roland still hasn't attended his shop. That's, that's a bit average, really. If you're a butcher, you should probably clean the meat out every so often, but... Mm-hmm. That was like an interesting likeness that you threw in there, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> no, no, what I mean by Have that you is... played a Xenoblade game before, Dan? No, no. What I'm saying is Cyberpunk didn't listen at all. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Sorry. That just went, woo, right no, over they, they haven't listened yes. at all and haven't done anything to improve that, you know, as much as they say, oh, we're releasing this, releasing that bullshit. You can't have a game that is over a year old that still cannot be finished because the mm. butcher won't go to his shop. Like, I don't know. I'm literally a little bit, I'm still, I'm actually getting more irritated as time goes by because I enjoyed the game. Mm. So Monolith Soft over... CD Projekt Red, basically. Yeah. That's what we're trying to say. Well, that it's is- the least you can do. If you if something goes wrong, the least you can do is, like, listen to people and then try and fix it. And there was nothing inherently wrong with Xenoblade 2. I just want to try and pull this back to Xenoblade um, because it does it does deserve a bit of attention. Let's talk uh, about Xenoblade. There was nothing inherently wrong with Xenoblade. Like, it worked. Mm-hmm. It played. You could finish it. It just wasn't everyone's favourite. There was, like... The gameplay loop was interesting. The it was a bit convoluted, just a bit annoying. Some of the uh, voicing options are a bit high pitched, shall we say? It was just like it was small things, you know. It, again, it wasn't inherently unplayable, but they listened to all that feedback, brought it back with the DLC, and yeah, and now number three is coming up. So. I have high hopes for it because since, you know, they've already listened and tweaked Mm. things to make it better for people, now they know what people want from a Xenoblade game. I agree. I agree. Have you played a Xenoblade game before, Dan? Sorry. I I have played uh, number two briefly. Yep. Uh, Not as much as what I would have liked, but I'm definitely, well, three is definitely on the cards for me to pick up. Um, yeah, no, it is. it is for me. Yeah, I'm just, I'll, I will wait, engage feedback first. Yeah. Well, we will we'll let you know. It's, mm. it's one of those, it's one of those games where I prefer to wait for feedback. So Pokemon, I just bought it, right? Yeah. It was a new release. 
buy it. Diamond and Pearl, I didn't buy it because I had no interest in replaying that game. Right, yep. I just wasn't yep. didn't speak to me. Pokemon, yeah, cool. Pre-ordered, bang, got it. Move on. Zen of, uh, I want to pre-order. Yeah, just, it's not quite as high. I, I get that. Yeah, you know, it's it's yeah, just something I'll wait three or four weeks to yeah. wait and see what the reviews come back at because I, I never trust reviews in the first two weeks. No, 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 that's chill. Yeah, I think never. us as content creators don't have that luxury a lot of the time. No. So if we no. want to make a video on Xenoblade, which we probably will, then we have to play it day one yeah. for a long time. Uh, you got to day one I mean, and yeah. Yeah, smash that out. The, yeah. the good thing that you have on your side is I believe there are uh, embargoes on this particular game. Okay. Nice. From what I have what I have heard on the grapevine. So some reviewers won't be able to bring anything out until much closer to release. That's so good. I enjoy that. If, if like it's, it's okay, let's look at say a new Samsung phone for those listening that don't understand how embargoes work. A Samsung will give say 10 reviewers a phone and say, okay, you're only allowed to talk about X, Y, and Z. You aren't mm-hmm. allowed to talk about these other things. And you can only release this video on October the 10th at 2 o'clock, right? Yeah. And then you'll notice on YouTube on October the 10th at 2 drops. o'clock, there's 20, yeah. 20 reviews that all drop at the same time. And they all talk about the same thing mm-hmm. because yes. that's all they're allowed to talk about. Yeah, That's the deal of them getting yeah. the early copy, basically, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, copy. So I, I have... Yeah. I've been told that there is a similar situation going on uh, with Chronicles. So, I, yeah. Cool. Um, that's, that's good. I'm glad. It makes our, our lives a lot easier when stuff like that doesn't happen. Uh, mm-hmm. The Switch OLED, for example, so many creators got that early. And, yeah, it was a, it was a little bit annoying. But, you know, that's okay. Um, for those of you that haven't played a Xenoblade game before, it is a JRPG uh, with a unique battle system. Uh, it is, please don't let this turn you off, but it is an, like an auto battling style of, of gameplay, which does turn a lot of, it does turn a lot of people off, uh, unfortunately. So you basically, you, you get into a fight. It's, it's a big open area game. You get into a fight and, your characters will just, you know, stand there and swing their sword or whatever. And you essentially just get to choose like special moves and uh, how they react. Uh, You know, you can change their stances. So make them stand far away and do some magic, magic attacks or, you know, have them go in and, and use their swords or whatever. And that does turn a lot of people off. I I understand that Uh, it's not my favorite element of the game per se. I think, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, the first one, especially had an amazing story. Like, like, oh my god, that that story is is amazing. I uh, highly recommend you checking it out. And that is that's what it's got going for it for me. So I, I get I get the whole battle thing turning people off. I think Monolith Soft is going to try something a little different with. Chronicles 3. I don't think they're going to reinvent the wheel or anything. I think they're going to go with that similar style of auto battling, but I think there is going to be a lot more button presses involved with the battle style. I I hope. Well, that was the main thing that I heard people say that they didn't like about the game and they're in the business of listening to people. So Hmm. yeah, yeah, they probably won't totally redo it. Knights, Knights of the Old Republic 2 do something similar. Uh, Final Fantasy series do it. Um, no. Nah. No, nah, they've got a turn-based or an action-based as far as I've played anyway. Yeah, I've played 10 and it was fun. turn-based. Yeah, and then they went action-based in 13, 12? Uh, I can't remember. More like 
Mm, I haven't slashy. played the previous ones, but I think. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah, I don't like think it's auto battler. Old school. Anyways, mm, yeah, some of them probably one of the early ones. They they do exist. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, hundred percent. No, I agree with you. That is a problem, especially with number two, when your special attacks almost don't make any difference anyway. So what's the point of actually sitting there and waiting for this auto battle to happen when you make no difference anyway? Mm. I reckon there might be some a couple tweaks there. I yes. don't think they're going to totally redo it, but maybe there'll be a little more to it. That would be nice anyway, because you like to actually play your games, don't you? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I totally get where people are coming from with Xenoblade 2. Especially. I'm pretty excited for it, though. I wish we saw a little bit more of like what it's actually about. I don't know. Like, I felt like, you know, there's going to be whistles. Yep. Mm-hmm. We actually, in our notes, called it Xenoblade Whistles because they're yep. playing some whistles at the start. Xenoblade Whistles. <laughs> um, we should see some more trailers and things soon. Though, we I'm should. Sure. That, this is coming out in September. So there's a lot of time. Yeah, left. it's actually the only game we got that is coming out in the second half of this year. Um, yeah, it's a sequel to quite a large property that is a Nintendo exclusive. And that is what they did to wrap up the direct they always do uh save quite quite a large one for the end uh it's breath of the wild two times ago uh it was bayonetta last time and this time we got xenoblade so looking forward to that Mm -hmm. just quickly and i do mean very quickly because we have been going for a long time here laura what games are you going to day one pick up day one from the direct from the direct Xenoblade. Yep. Probably that Live Alive game. Yep. I agree. I think those were my two yep. favorites. You, you can include some the old ones. That oh, okay. Well, then Kirby. I'm still not sure about Splatoon because um, if you play it by yourself, then that would be like totally awesome. But the fact that me and Tom would want to play it together, we've got to buy two copies. And I'm, look, I'm. You're just going to learn something about me right now. I'm a bit of a Scrooge. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've brought this up on the podcast before, actually. Mm, You can't play split-screen co-op. Yes. Yes. So not sure about that one. But Kirby, Live live Alive. (laughs) I'm blaming you for that one. And Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Those are the ones I was most excited for, I think. What about you guys? Wii Sports? Dan, what is your day one purchase? We just discussed Xenoblade not being a day one purchase. Doesn't mean you're not interested in the others, but is there anything you're 100% getting day one? Uh, The Mario Kart DLC, because it comes automatically. Mm, Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, No, look, nothing I am so keen as to say I'll get it day one. I'll definitely get Strikers. I'll definitely Mm. get switch sports we can play that together and you can go in a different room if you really dislike family fun that much don't know why you need to be a bit you think you can play online with people during the um test run of it that they're having on like the 19th between 18th and 20th i think it is yep so Um, on that night and if you're awake we'll be playing it on our stream more than welcome want to play with us it is quite late though so i understand it have cool. prior engagements. Cool. See you then. There you go. Make I'll sure to come before. to our Switch stream. It starts at 11.30 Eastern Daylight Savings Time because Laura and I work a ridiculous job. Uh, so it starts at 11.30 p.m. Uh, that time and will run into the early hours of Sunday morning for those of you that are interested, Saturday the 19th. What do you think that you will be buying first day? What am I going to be picking up day one? Well, I have actually already made all of my pre-orders. <laughs> so all of them. Uh, I will, as far as old, old old titles, titles we didn't really talk about here that were in the direct. Uh, triangle, triangle strategy, strategy definitely. I am so hyped for that. Might might be my most hyped for game this year. But maybe it is Kirby. I'm those those two games are just. Whew, I'm so excited for those two games. Uh, triangle strategy and Kirby, and they come out like oh god, so many games to play. Yeah, Kirby. next month. My god, both of them. That's insane. Yeah, so definitely those two. I Splatoon, again, I think that's only for content creation, uh, but I have 
got myself a copy of that and uh, it will be fun to play on stream it will be fun let's be mm. honest if anyone else well, we're gonna have to take turns yep. though again if anyone else has a switch uh we will be probably be playing splatoon 3 on stream oh excuse me on stream and you are most welcome to join us uh so yeah definitely those three live alive xenoblade chronicles 3 uh there was a Klonoa remake that we didn't talk about. It's a 2.5D platformer. Um, it's like a wraparound thing. That looks really cool. I'm definitely getting that. And I believe that I, and Switch Sports. So cool. all of them. It's a great haul. <laughs> that is a great haul. Yeah. Um, everything except that cricket game. Yeah, oh, it wasn't even cricket. Sorry, baseball. baseball. Look, I mean, cricket is the only way it could be more boring to me. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing cricket's not on Switch Sports, then, eh? I would Thank never hear the end of it. Yeah. Thank God. So, what did I say? Strategy, Kirby, Splatoon, and then Live Alive, Xenoblade, Switch Sports. Yeah. Just a few. That's, that's, it's going to be it's a fun year. So Again, me, I'm very, I think this year is looking uh, really good for Switch. I've moved away from physical games on the Switch. Yeah, I no, that's on. have no interest in getting any more physical games on the Switch because it is not a device I want to change cartridges on. I don't know why. It's just I, I just want to be able to pick it up and play. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It is. Yeah, it is. I convenient. want to change. Blah blah blah. So I'm personally probably going to get uh, a one terabyte SD card. Smart move. And yeah, they're good. Great idea. Move Great investment. Away from my physical uh, game Collection. library. So for me, I don't need to pre-order anything, so to speak. Even like you can pre-order these things on the eShop and get some DLC or something. I know. What get a get a uniform. It preloads it, which is good. That's, so, that's right. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. That way you can be like the first people in the whole world to so play the game. Legends, We're in Australia Legends and we live in the future. An example, I played that within yeah. two or three minutes of it being allowable, uh, but it had yeah, already preloaded. So that yeah, game that's there, really nice. I pre-ordered, but the rest I'm... I, don't really seem necessary to pre-order. I'll buy them, but I, I don't because I purchase online only now. I don't see the point. Mm. Absolutely, I like I getting the little bonuses that come with the pre-orders, I like agree. steel cases I'm, and stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I know a lot of people don't like steel cases, but I'm obsessed. Mm. So we've got a mini collection. Speaking of digital games, if you find yourself in need of any, make sure you go check out iDigitalGames.com. They have a fantastic selection of digital games and quite often you will find them for a far cheaper price than you will find them on platforms such as Steam. So definitely go over and help support Dan, which in turn helps support the podcast, uh, which in turn helps support us. If you go onto our Twitch at twitch.tv slash some kind of gaming, there is a link on there that will send you to Dan's website. If you can't be bothered typing in iDigitalGames.com, you want to type in twitch.tv instead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Either way, do whatever makes you happy. Don't forget to check out Laura and I on said Twitch channel, Some Kind of Gaming, S-U-M Kind of Gaming, and YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all those things, all the social media garbage. iDigitalGames is also on all of those social media dumps as well. Thank you. Thank you, friends, for doing this podcast. Thank you. Thank you, anyone who's still yeah. remaining. Yeah. Last men standing after this three-hour adventure. Yes, it's been a long haul this time. We got quite heated, but it's it's been fun. Well, we least. missed last week, so it's like two and one. Yeah, it's like a makeup episode, you know. Mm. Ooh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next week. All right. Thank you so much, my friends. Dan, thank you. See you thank next you. time. Bye. Bye.